Look, libraries are awesome. I mean, look at that. Wow. But let's be real. For everyday research, you'll probably just go to YouTube for a quick tutorial or explainer video. Hey, you could even use YouTube in a library. And there are plenty of beard grooming tutorials enough to keep me busy for hours and hours and hours and hours and wait, how did I end up here? We've all been there. You see, the good and the bad of YouTube is that it serves up videos you probably wanna watch. That's not magic, it's because of algorithms. Algorithms are the set of instructions that decide what content you see and in what order it's listed when you search online. And these algorithms are not unbiased code just handing out useful and factual information. They are designed by people and they're made to suck you down a rabbit hole suggesting more and more that'll just keep you watching. Why? They're not smiling evilly twirling their mustaches as you procrastinate on your homework. It's because YouTube's business model depends on your eyes staying on their videos and the ads they sold for as long as possible. And YouTube's business model is slang. In the US, almost 75% of adults use it. And if you're under 25, you're probably on it every single day. Too bad that business model isn't worried about whether or not you see the most accurate information. In fact, YouTube's algorithms tend to recommend you stuff that just reinforces what you already like or believe. Facts are not their biggest priority. It's you staying and watching. So YouTube CEO can call it an online library, free speech. But it really isn't. It's a social media and video sharing platform that lives off of advertising. So how can you avoid buying into false information on YouTube? Like it or not, more and more people are going to social media for news and to Google and YouTube for research. So digital platforms like YouTube are the gatekeepers of information whether they intend it to be or not. And unfortunately, media savvy con artists and extremist groups like conspiracy theorists and white supremacists can take advantage of YouTube's algorithms to push their agendas. And even though YouTube has hired thousands of people to sort out and remove the false or dangerous videos, it's not really working. Some of this stuff looks legit enough to sneak past all these filters. Now, if you're one of those types who's up to no good, it's even easier to game YouTube when there's a lack of content on certain topics, something experts call a data void. You might be thinking, everyone and their mom and their mom's dog make videos. How can that be a thing? Well, actually, it's pretty common on YouTube. If you're searching for something like how to get that perfect smoky eye, Videos abound, but say you're looking for videos about something super specific or uncommon like mm, toxic orange juice. Mm, yes, I just made that up right now, but for the sake of learning, just assume that it's a thing that you read about in a sketchy health blog written by someone who works for an orange soda company. Well, YouTube's search algorithm wouldn't have any high quality videos to return, only garbage. And that, my friends, is a data void. This happens all the time with breaking news. During the time between the event and when journalists have fact-checked and verified what happened, anyone can post anything about it, no matter how untrue. And if you search YouTube then, that's all you'll see. Then there's just outdated or poorly phrased search terms. Another trick propagandists use is to coordinate around strategic phrases, something like crisis actors. They spread them like crazy online and then sometimes journalists amplify them even more. So if you search for these terms, you will only see propaganda until legit media organizations or experts catch up and publish videos that debunk the phony terms. Another way that propagandists get their message out is just by being good at social media. They figured out how to be popular. And we can't forget that YouTube is a social media platform. By engaging with, commenting, and even guest appearing on each other's channels, they associate their videos with other videos created by popular influencers or even mainstream media outlets. And ultimately, they can say whatever they want with no repercussions. There's no one but their viewers to fact check. And again, YouTube isn't evil laughing while they stare at the piles of money they've made off anti-vaxxers. In early 2019, they promised to reduce what they call harmful borderline content, like false miracle cures or blatant false claims about historical events. To be clear, they're not banning these videos, they just wanna keep them out of your autoplays. Look, YouTube didn't set out to build a platform around truth and civic responsibility. Remember, they started out with millions of zany videos about cats, thank the gods. And we could debate about their role in the media landscape for hours, but instead, lucky you, we've got tips. How can you help yourself avoid the traps of misinformation and propaganda and wander around safely on YouTube? For some help, we met up with Sophia Noble, the author of Algorithms of Oppression. She's an expert on this stuff. Hi, Miles. Hi, everyone. So you've just learned a lot about algorithms, and I've got a few tips that might also be helpful. 
The first is be careful how you conduct a search query. And by that I mean, be specific. Use as many specific keywords as you can. Don't just generalize because this will help you really key in on good quality information as best as you can get. If you see something that's a little bit off the rails, pull back and realize that you might be engaging with content that has been optimized to pull your attention away from something that you're looking for. YouTube's a great place to start, but don't just rely on YouTube for all your information. Go to a library, talk to people, read the news, read books, develop a deep kind of curiosity, but back that up with expertise because that's really what's gonna inform you. So there you have it. The more you know about things like how YouTube's algorithms work, the more you are empowered to trust or not trust what you're seeing. YouTube and Google and Instagram do a lot to help you find information that they think you'll like, but it may not be the most accurate and likely won't offer multiple perspectives. And until those companies figure out if they should have ethical publishing standards or not, it's on you to do that work. So after hearing all this, do you plan to do anything differently to size up the videos you watch on YouTube? Let us know in the comments below. If you learned something from this video, check out our other videos on deepfakes and false equivalents. And as always, like and subscribe and stay above the noise, y'all. Peace out.